guys, it's a pleasure to be joined by uh, Wayne Larrabee, longtime Packers radio voice. Um, he has seen it all, uh, but perhaps never seen a Lions team that is this good this late in the season. He's not the uh, only one. Wayne Larrabee joins us now on the phone. Wayne, how you doing? Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Same to you guys. How's everything going? Everything going is uh, great, Wayne. And good to hear from look, you, Wayne. you've been around for a long time, Wayne. You know we have not experienced winning like this here in Detroit. So this feels like a new thing for us. When you see the Detroit Lions on your side, and of course you saw them uh, earlier in the season, what is the difference to you? How do you view this team when you're looking at them? Uh, what are you guys talking about? I mean. <laughs> You mean to tell me you don't remember 1962? <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. There you go. Oh my you, gosh. You don't remember so Ace Kutowski and Dutch Clark? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> Alex Cares. That was, that was the best Lombardi team the Packers had. Maybe the best team in Green Bay history. And Alex Cares and company smoked them that day at Ooh. Tiger Stadium. I mean, that was like yesterday. You guys don't remember that? Wow. We actually, Wayne, I do the local uh, Fox <laughs> morning show here, and we actually had oh, video man. on Monday of that 1962 Bobby Lions Lane? and Packers game. Uh, Is it Bobby Lane? <laughs> and, and the Lions, that was the last time the Lions started this good, but they didn't make the playoffs that year because only one team at the time uh, made the championship, as it were, not right. the playoffs, and it was the Green Bay Packers. Their one loss came against the Lions. Starting that dynasty. Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, you're right. And, and this is the best Detroit team I've seen. Now, they've had some good ones. As you guys were discussing, they, they did make the playoffs and didn't win a playoff game. But they've had some good teams. And when I was in Chicago, those Barry Sanders teams, yeah. they could always wear you out on any given Sunday. They were great. You know, they had some great teams there. But nothing of, of this ilk. And I will say this, and I'm, I said it last, as far back as last year, midway through last year, uh, this Lions team is built from the, the – the foundation up offensive line defensive line uh and built out from there and it's an excellent football team really good team well coached offensively on especially and um you know hey they cj gardner johnson was going to be a big factor in that secondary and he's on ir otherwise i think they'd be a lot better than they are defensively and they're not bad defensively by any stretch yeah, 100%. Uh, Got to love what they're doing at defense, minus having CJ GJ. But uh, I want to talk about the Green Bay Packers for a little bit. We saw Jordan Love last week have 322 yards, two touchdowns, kind of one of his biggest games so far as a starting quarterback. What's the pulse on Jordan Love in Green Bay? Like, Is he going to be the guy moving forward, or are they still trying to figure it out? Not trying to put you on the spot, Wayne, just trying to get some questions. I think uh, he's showing promising um – promising steps toward becoming the guy in Green Bay. Uh, is it a little early? Yeah. And, and why haven't they been able to make a decision yet? Well, he's got the youngest offense in the league around yeah. him by a lot. Okay? So it's really hard week to week to evaluate Jordan Love, except that I will say this, in the last three weeks, he's looked the part. He really has. He's played well. Um, but again, he's got a lot of young people around him and um, you know, outside of Kansas City, uh, you know, sometimes young people have trouble catching the ball. So, um, <laughs> yeah. now Kansas City's leading the universe in drop passes. Yeah, but them and the Ravens. That's another story. But still, no, this is a, this is a guy, uh, you know, they knew by this time in Aaron Rodgers' first year as a starter that he was the guy. Well, but they had guys around him with experience, and that's not the case with this young quarterback. And so I think it's going to take a little more time to find out. And by the way, due to contractually, they can they can take this all the way through next year if they wanted to. Yeah. So there's no hurry. There's no hurry here. And uh, they've got a plan, and, and they're following it. Yeah, whether it's James Jones, Donald Driver, Greg Jennings, I mean, where do I begin with the wide receiver core that Aaron uh, Aaron uh, did have, same class, 05. But let's talk about those wide receivers, and we know all, one all too well. He uh, went against the University of Michigan Wolverines, and it's Jaden Reed. Jaden Reed seems to be a guy that's starting to emerge himself as maybe wide receiver one in Green Bay, obviously Romeo Dobbs and uh, Christian Watson. How's Jaden Reed looking this year, and how is he looking in the mix of the other two? He's been terrific, um, and we could see it going back to the rookie minicamp that he was going to give the Packers something they haven't had. Um, an explosive player in the passing game from the slot. And and that's something they hadn't had since 
maybe, you know, the young days of Randall Cobb back in the early 2010s. So, you know, this is mm. a kid that um, he's not a surprise to us, but he's really showing out well. Uh, they hit him on a reverse um, the other day, yesterday or Sunday, whatever it was, and uh, he took it to the house. So he's an explosive player. I think, you know, with the running back situation the way it is, the injuries they have there, I wouldn't be surprised to see him get the ball more often as a running uh, runner back, running back and, and not just as a wide receiver because he can make things happen. Hey, Wayne, quick, uh, you brought up Randall Cobb, and it's funny. I was talking to Randall Cobb in preseason when I went to New York Jets. I think they played the Bucks in a little scrimmage. And I said, yeah, you know, we beat you guys. In two I said, you guys, we, beat, we lost you guys in 2010, and then you eventually went on and won the Super Bowl. I hate when you get the guys years wrong. He was like, well, actually, you know, I, I wasn't in the league yet, but no, I, but I was, ah, oh, dang, Rand, I'm so sorry. I felt bad, but he was nice about it. I, I, I aged him by about three years. <laughs> yeah. I aged him yeah. by about three years. Hey, Wayne, I wanted to ask you about, uh, go back in time here a little bit. You used to be with the Bears, longtime Bears voice, now with the Packers. So you know the old NFC Central, now North. And we talked about uh, a documentary that came out today on Amazon Prime, Bye Bye Barry. It's Barry Sanders' documentary explaining why he finally retired from the game. If you remember, obviously, he faxed in his retirement. But uh, one of his teammates, Scott Mitchell, and I know you did a, quite a number of his games as well, came out and kind of felt slighted a little bit, saying a lot of people picked on him, saying that he wasn't the quarterback, he was the missing ingredient, uh, they should have gotten this guy or this guy. What was your take on, on Scott Mitchell and that Lions squad in the 90s? Well, it, I mean, Barry Sanders cast a big shadow. I mean, that, he was the guy. It, it almost was irrelevant who they had a number of different people at quarterback during his time there. Mitchell, Scott Mitchell was a talented guy when they got him in, in you know, maybe in, in a different circumstance, he, he would have blossomed. I, I really think that in pro sports, 90% of the players have to find the right system run by the right coach who trusts and believes in them, whether it's an assistant coach or a head coach. And, and maybe that never happened for Scott, but he was a talented guy, no doubt. And Barry Sanders running the football, I mean, they had some things going there. They had some things going on, the, on that side of the football. The thing I always remember about those Lions teams is, they kind of struggled defensively, if I'm not mistaken, and and so they could score on you, but you could score on them. Kind of feel, kind of feel like right now. It's kind of like right now when you score 41 and you win 41-38, and then last week against the Bears they come back. Take us to this game today, uh, Wayne, in a couple of days here at Thanksgiving Day. What does a Thanksgiving Day game mean to you and and to these players? Well, I think this one, you know, the one in Detroit in, in, that basically gets underway in the morning, um, that's the game that you, when you think of Thanksgiving, you think of that game. Yes. You don't think of the Cowboys. You don't think of whatever Monday, uh, Thursday night game they're going to put on Amazon or wherever they're going to throw it. Um, <laughs> you don't think of those games. You think of Lions. And you really, if you go back, if you're of a certain vintage, <laughs> I think I already exposed that oh, yeah. to myself. I was a kid, but that was Green Bay. And uh, Detroit, and that was the, that that was Thanksgiving. That's what it was all about. And whether the teams are good or not, it didn't matter. And you know, I, I think a couple of things happened with that 1962 game. First and foremost, after that game, everyone just assumed around the country, well, the Lions can't be beat on Thanksgiving. The Lions are always tough on Thanksgiving. Well, if you go back and look at the record <laughs> of the Lions on Thanksgiving, it's well under 500. Okay, we'll catch um, up though. But the other the <laughs> other thing that game did though. Lombardi went to Roselle after that game and said, we're not playing this game every year. You can throw us this once in a while, but we're not playing this game every year. And then he did that exactly right after that game in 1962. Wow. Talking to Wayne Larrabee, longtime radio voice of the Green Bay Packers and the Chicago Bears before that. Wayne, I wanted to ask you about the, the, the Packers, you know, where they are as a franchise right now. I mean, if you look at this NFC, um, they feel like they're a middle-of-the-pack team. I mean, hell, they... They've got five games at the end of the season. They could win every single one of them, and uh, you never know. Maybe get to nine wins and get it in the playoffs. Uh, but my goodness, wh where is this franchise right now? Are they are they a um, retooling franchise? Are they a rebuilding franchise? Ascending how, or descending? Uh, yeah, <laughs> how would you characterize where they are right now? This is kind wow. of new territory for them. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of a loaded question. Um, <laughs> You know, really, when you look, well, I mean, 
there's no question they went to retool that offense, and, and they have in the last two years now retooled the offense. Um, they still have some things they have to get done on the offensive line because David Bakhtiari is probably done. Uh, maybe not done playing, but he's probably done in Green Bay. He's their great left tackle who never came back from that uh, injury, uh, major uh, ACL injury he suffered New Year's Eve in 2021. So, um, or 20, I believe it was. So anyway, you know, that's kind of, they've got a lot of work to do there. They've got a lot of young pieces in the skill position uh, areas. Uh, they're going to probably need to retool the backfield the way they the Lions did last year. And, um, you know, then you look defensively and, and, you know, they've invested heavily in that defense. And, you know, it has not performed the way everyone had hoped. So, um, you know, the, 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 I, I think they're going to get there. I, they have the draft picks to do it. And uh, I think they have a good plan for putting it together. But it it's going to take some time. There's no doubt about that. But I think they'll be a lot better in December than they are now. They'll be a lot better next year than they are this year. And that's that's what you're looking for. And, and then, you know, are they ready to join the other teams in the upper echelon of the NFC again? A lot will depend on how that quarterback pans out. That's what I want to go here, Wayne, my last one. It's about Aaron Rodgers and, and how he wound up leaving uh, the Packers. He walked off with Randall Cobb, if we remember last year, the last night of the year when the Lions finally beat him at Lambeau. Uh, what, what went wrong there uh, with this whole Aaron Rodgers situation? Was it drafting Jordan Love on that COVID draft? What happened? Why, he should have finished with the Packers. Yeah, you know, I, I think that was at one point the intent uh, for everyone. But it got to a point where I think he just, you know, um, they were loading up to go for the Super Bowl two, three years in a row, which is why they're in the salary cap position they are now. And it didn't quite work out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, they had a couple of great teams, 2020, but Tampa Bay had a team that was a little bit better than them. Uh, 2021 was probably LaFleur's best team, in my opinion, uh, top seed in the NFC, and they, they lost on a couple of bad special teams plays to San Francisco in the playoffs at Lambeau Field. And, you know, at that point, when Devontae Adams decided he would not re-sign with the team, I think that's where, um, you know, some things maybe changed a little bit at that point in time. Uh, the Packers would have, had they had a meeting with, this is how I understand it, had Aaron and the Packers gotten together, they would have had this meeting. The Packers would have told him, Aaron, if you want, we'd love to have you come back as our quarterback, but here's what we're going to do. And they would have outlined this this entire, you know, we're going with the young receivers, this, that, and the other thing. And Aaron Rodgers had said on numerous occasions, way before the end of that season, he said, I don't want to be part of a rebuild. And in Aaron Rodgers' mind, all those young guys at the skill positions, that was a rebuild, and he wanted no part of that. So. You know, whether they had that discussion after the season or not didn't matter. Everybody knew the answer. So it was probably time for both sides to move on. Uh, yeah, Wayne, I'm talking to the voice of the Packers radio, Wayne Larrabee, a longtime voice that is. Wayne, let, on some fun. Let's end on some fun. You're coming in town. Where are you going to eat tomorrow night before the game on Thursday on Thanksgiving? Where are you eating in Detroit? Because I got some recommendations for you. Well, I'd like to hear them because I think we're staying out. In, you know, we're not staying in downtown Detroit, which I'd love to do because it's one of the most uh, re, uh, revitalized cities in America. It's just outstanding the things you guys have going downtown now in Detroit. But I, I think we're staying out in the suburbs somewhere. So Birmingham, Troy. I'm probably going to stay. I'm tell you, to be honest with you, I'm going to have to tell you, I'm going to probably stay in and be studying a little bit because this is a short week for me. Okay. <laughs> Good stuff, Good Wayne. Stuff, we Wayne. can't thank you enough See for you spending some service. time with us. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family and uh, safe travels and uh, all the best down the road there. We appreciate all right, you, guys. Wayne. Good being with you. All the best. Happy Thanksgiving. You got oh, it. A happy Thanksgiving. The great Wayne Larrabee, longtime radio voice of the Packers.